Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth and final episode of a series I've partnered with Formula E to put together talking about electric car technology. Now in this video we're going to be talking about five performance advantages of electric vehicles. A lot of people talk about the efficiency and sustainable benefits of electric cars. Uh, I find the performance advantages a bit more interesting so that's what we're going to be talking about here. Now the first thing we're going to discuss is instant peak torque and I created a video on why this is so if you're curious about that I'll have a link in the video description uh, but essentially in an electric car you put your foot down flat and you're going to get immediate peak torque and actually you know depending on how you tune that vehicle you're going to get that torque from just zero rpm uh, so amazing for street driving so in street driving which is what most of us do uh, you know you always need to accelerate from a stop that happens all the time you're always at very low speeds and in these low speeds electric vehicles when they're at low RPM will always have peak torque available uh, depending on how they're tuned and as a result it makes them quite fun to drive very cool feature of electric cars uh, excellent acceleration and then as you start to get into those higher RPMs and higher vehicle speeds that torque will start to taper off Number two, no complex transmissions. And this actually goes back to the first video I did in this series with Formula E, talking about why you don't need multiple gears in electric vehicles. Uh, so you can have a very simple setup in Formula E. They have uh, the battery sends power to a motor, motor to a transmission, but it can be just a single gear from that gear to a differential and then to the driven wheels. You could make it even simpler than that and just have your motor a gear reduction and then have it go to a driven wheel and have individual motors for each wheel. Now the advantages of not having this complex transmission, only using one gear, things like that, of course you're going to save weight, uh, it's going to save on complexity, and as a result, you know, reliability is going to be better if you don't have a complex transmission. Uh, shift time, also, you don't have to shift gears, uh, so you save on shift time. You know, this kind of goes back to the debate between dual clutch transmissions and manual transmissions. Often manual transmissions are more fun to drive, but all of the supercars are tending to go towards things like dual clutch transmissions uh, because they're faster. The shift time is less, so the cars end up being quicker. Well, EVs take this to the next extreme level and there is no shifting, uh, so it's as fast as it could possibly get for the given power. Number three, I want to talk about throttle control, and I think this one is particularly special about electric vehicles because when you give it 50% throttle in electric vehicle, you get 50% power. You can tune that to match exactly and get exactly what you ask for. Very different from driving a turbocharged car. You may give it 50% and get 100% power. Uh, you may give it 50% and get less than that. It can be tuned very differently, and it's much more challenging with internal combustion engines rather than just providing 50% power. Also, even with naturally aspirated, engines if you think about how throttle bodies work in these vehicles uh, you're going to have a difference in how much torque you get in throttle as you open it so let's say it's open five percent and you open it to fifteen percent well now you have three times the area for air to flow through that throttle so you're going to notice a significant increase in torque versus if you're at ninety percent and you increase another ten percent similar to our previous from five to fifteen percent uh, you're only going to have a one point one one times increase in how much area you have in addition to allow for for airflow so the torque increase won't be as great from 90 to 100 as it is from 5 to 15 percent so it's interesting the way that these are tuned you know mechanical does have a nice feel to it but with an electric vehicle you can get exactly what you ask for with that throttle pedal uh, because you can choose exactly how much power you want it to deliver at any given position versus internal combustion engines which are more sensitive when you're at low partial throttle now, number four is no brake fade. And it's not to say that you could never have brake fade in an electric vehicle, uh, but it's far less likely. And the reason is, is because you can regenerate that energy in braking and send it back to the battery rather than using your mechanical brakes to do so. So when you slam on the brakes, you can use this electric motor, turn it into a generator, turn that power uh, and recharge your battery uh, rather than just heating up your mechanical brakes. This in turn allows you to use smaller brakes, uh, less rotating mass, uh, less unsprung mass, so some better benefits of reducing the size of those brakes and you're not as dependent on them. They're going to last longer, uh, they won't be as necessary, and you don't have to worry so much about brake fade in an electric vehicle uh, because you can send that heat into the battery and you simply have to worry about the cooling system for the battery and the motors rather than the braking system. And finally, we get into battery packaging. And yes, batteries are pretty heavy. So that's a bit of a disadvantage for electric vehicles, but it's very flexible where you can put this battery. So in Formula E, they locate it within the center uh, behind the driver. So it's a nice central location that allows for a good weight distribution and also means that the car has a low polar moment of inertia 
Basically, that just means it's very agile. It doesn't resist turning much. But again, this is something very flexible. So you could just take a battery and make it very flat and wide and put it along the bottom of the car, have a nice even weight distribution and keep the center of gravity really low. And also by having it on the bottom of the car, you can help out with cooling and use that airflow underneath the car to help cool that battery. So a huge thank you to Formula E for working with me on this five part series. If you guys have not yet checked out their YouTube channel, I would definitely recommend doing so. They've got a lot of very cool technical videos that they put up teaching about how cars work. I'll include some links in the video description. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.